Queen Cleopatra VII, known as Cleopatra, is the last king of the Macedonian dynasty, which ruled Egypt from the death of Alexander the Great in 323 BC until the occupation of Egypt by Rome in 30 BC. Part of a series of articles about Ancient Rome and the Fall of the Republic Dignitaries Mark Anthony, Cleopatra, Pompeius, Sextus Pompeius, Cicero, Brutus, Crassus Events Assassination of Julius Caesar, the First Triumvirate, the Second Triumvirate, Caesar's Civil War, the Assassination of Julius Caesar, the Sicilian Rebellion, the Liberators' Civil War, the Last War. Sites Caesarian Alexandria Commissium. Korea, Julia Korea, Hostelia Roster Pompeius Theater. Gate Emblem of Ancient Rome. Mean. Cleopatra was the daughter of Ptolemy, 12. She succeeded him as queen in 51 BC, sharing the throne with her brother Ptolemy, 13. She was described as beautiful and charming. In contrast to what is shown by the pictures that have reached us. As for the men who fell in love with her, she captivated them with her strong, cute personality, intelligence and cunning. And she was constantly in conflict with her brother, which ended in her expulsion from Egypt. The country at that time was a kingdom under Roman protection, and the main source of wheat for the Roman people. And Caesar came to Egypt after the defeat of Pompey in Pharsalus in the year 48 BC, and he found that the civil war was still going on. Cleopatra was trying to return to Egypt, so she suddenly appeared before Caesar wrapped in a carpet as they claim so that she could beg him to help her achieve her goal of returning to power and he captured his family, either with her charms, or with the clear logic that she would be a better ruler than her brother. Caesar helped her defeat Ptolemy, who was drowned at the end of the battle. Cleopatra ruled a few years. And in the year 40 BC, AD her kingdom was part of the imperial share that afflicted Marcus Antonius when he divided the Roman world with both Octavius backslash U200 B backslash U200 band Marcus Lepidus after the death of Julius Caesar. He loved Marcus Antonius Cleopatra, and this love affair cost him the loss of his favor in Rome. Antonius ended up committing suicide after the defeat inflicted on him by Octavius in the Battle of Actium in the year 31 BC. When Cleopatra heard the news, she also committed suicide. Her Biography Cleopatra 7, Greek, Kappa Lambda Epsilon Omicron Pi Tau Alpha Phi Iota Lambda Omicron Pi Tau Omega Rho, January 69 BC 30 BC, was the Queen of Egypt famous in history and drama for her relationship with Julius Caesar, then Marcus Antonius, and the mother of Ptolemy XV, Caesar Ion. She became queen upon the death of her father, Ptolemy XII, in the year 51 BC, and she ruled successively with her two brothers Ptolemy XIII and Ptolemy XIV, 67 and her son Ptolemy XV Caesar Ion after the victory of the Roman armies Octavian, later the new emperor Augustus, over their joint forces, Cleopatra committed suicide, and so did Antony, and Egypt fell under the control of the Romans. What history tells us about Cleopatra being one of the great queens of Egypt, whatever the differences were about her relationship with the policies of the Roman Empire. She even called herself the new Isis, which reflects the extent of her political intelligence and her seriousness in ruling Egypt successfully. Cleopatra was a talented queen. She spoke several languages, led armies at the age of 21, and was educated in the beacon of science of her time, Alexandria. She worked to restore the glories of her ruling family, and was able to establish stability and peace in the country during her rule, and combat corruption. At that time, Egypt was a prosperous country, under the rule of a queen whose gender the people did not see as a defect, so their only preoccupation was her good management of the country. Life and Rule Born in 69 BC, Cleopatra is described as actively influencing Roman politics at a critical period, and as having come to represent, as no other woman of antiquity did, the first paradigm of the Romantic femme fatale. She is the daughter of King Ptolemy XII Alitus, 
and it was destined for Cleopatra to become the last queen of the Ptolemaic dynasty that ruled Egypt after the death of Alexander the Great in 323 BC and its annexation to Rome in 30 BC. Ptolemaic Family The rulers of Egypt from the Ptolemies Ptolemy I Ptolemy II Ptolemy III Ptolemy IV Ptolemy V Cleopatra I Ptolemy VI Ptolemy VII plus Cleopatra II Ptolemy VIII Ptolemy IX Ptolemy X Ptolemy XI Ptolemy XII Ptolemy XIII plus Cleopatra VII Ptolemy XIV plus Cleopatra VII Cleopatra VII Ptolemy XV, Caesar Aeon. The dynasty was founded by the officer Alexander Ptolemy, who became King Ptolemy I, ruler of Egypt. Cleopatra was from the Ptolemaic dynasty. For political reasons, she called herself the new Isis, a title that distinguished her from Queen Cleopatra III, who also claimed to be a living embodiment of the goddess Isis. When Ptolemy XII died in 51 BC, the throne passed to his young son, Ptolemy XIII, and his daughter, Cleopatra VII. It is known that the 18-year-old Cleopatra was about eight years older than her brother, and she became the dominant ruler. Evidence indicates that the first decree in which the name of Ptolemy precedes Cleopatra was in October of the year 50 BC. Cleopatra realized that she needed the support of the Romans, or more specifically the support of Caesar, if she was to regain the throne. Cleopatra and Julius Caesar Sculpture of Queen Cleopatra and her son Caesar Ion in Dendera Temple Historians say that both Cleopatra and Caesar sought to use the other, so Caesar sought money to pay off the debts incurred by Cleopatra's father Alites, in order to retain the throne. While Cleopatra was determined to keep her throne, and if possible to restore the glories of the early Ptolemies and recover as much as possible of their power, which included Syria, Palestine and Cyprus. The bonds of the relationship between them were strengthened, and she bore him after his departure a child whom she called Ptolemy Caesar, or Ptolemy XV, and the Alexandrians called him Caesarian. Configuring an army and confronting her brother King Ptolemy XIII fell under the influence of his advisors who worked to expel Cleopatra and expel her from Alexandria to monopolize power, so she resorted to eastern Egypt and was able to recruit an army of Bedouins to restore her position. Upon its arrival at Pelusium, present-day Port Said, where it was being confronted by the army of its brother, the ship of the Roman commander Pompeius arrived after his defeat in the Battle of Pharsalus, 48 BC. The king's guardians were only responsible for planning his death, and they presented his head to the, the victorious commander, Julius Caesar, who arrived in Alexandria on October 2, 48 BC. Cleopatra succeeded in penetrating the ranks of her opponents after her brother, Ptolemy XIII, tried to approach Caesar, as he found an opportunity to declare his full loyalty, and worked as much as he could to flatter him and draw close to him, and by doing so, he hoped that he would gain the support of the Romans to unilaterally offer Egypt. However, it turned out to Ptolemy that he made a mistake in his calculations. Caesar summoned both Ptolemy and Cleopatra to Alexandria and announced a support for the monarchy. During that time, the people of Alexandria had another queen on their minds. In November 48 BC, with Caesar and Cleopatra confined to the royal palace, the Alexandrian people proclaimed the royal younger sister, Arsino IV, Queen of Egypt. Cleopatra and Julius Caesar spent a long winter locked in the palace of Alexandria. It was not until March 47 BC that Roman reinforcements came, at which time Julius and Cleopatra became political and loving allies. Upon Caesar's liberation, Ptolemy XIII fled and drowned in the Nile while Arsino IV, the short-lived queen, was captured and taken to Rome. Widowed, Cleopatra was restored to her throne with full Roman support, and married her brother, Ptolemy XIV, who was then eleven years old. 
the bride got pregnant. In June 47 BC, Cleopatra gave birth to a son, whom she named Ptolemy Caesar, who was known as Caesar Ion, after his father. As for Caesar, who was originally married to a Roman wife, he was unable to formally acknowledge his Egyptian son. But before he was killed, he sought to pass legislation in Rome that would give him the right to marry a second woman and give legal legitimacy to a child born in foreign lands. The relationship between Caesar and Cleopatra was far from just a reckless passionate passion. Both sides were seasoned politicians, and neither of them could in any way be considered naive. Their physical union strengthened their political alliance and had an ideal political connotation. Egypt would have remained independent, except that it fell under the protection of Rome. Rome would have benefited from the generosity of Egypt, being the most fertile land in the world. Their common interests, ambition, and a common child, of course, bound them together. Both sides saw the benefits of keeping Egypt independent for Caesar Ion to inherit. With his confidence in her loyalty to her son, if not her loyalty to him, Caesar continued the march of encouraging Cleopatra as the real ruler of Egypt, even when he himself left the country. In 46 BC, Caesar won a victory in Rome, a victory that left the deposed Queen Arsino in chains before the Roman people. Cleopatra and Ptolemy XIV followed Caesar to Rome, and they remained there for about a year at Caesar's own expense. They were present to witness the awarding of a golden statue to Cleopatra by Caesar in the Temple of Venus Gentrix. They returned to Egypt only when Caesar was killed on 15 March in 44 BC. And Ptolemy XIV died immediately after his return to Egypt and it is not certain whether his death was an accident or a plan. With no other male heir to the throne, three-year-old Caesar Ion became Ptolemy XV and Cleopatra took the reins. Killing of Julius Caesar With Caesar's death, the trio Mark Anthony, Octavian, and Marcus Lepidus set out to catch those who assassinated him, Brutus and Cassius. Rome intended a general vengeance, and Egypt was called upon to come to its aid. This was very important to Cleopatra. The ruler of Cyprus defected and took the side of the killers, and decided to return her sister Arsino, who had gained her freedom again and lived in Ephesus, to rule Egypt. During her lifetime Arsino would become a constant threat to Cleopatra, so it was no great surprise that she was assassinated on her sister's orders in 40 BC. Cleopatra made a wise decision to ally with the trio. She raised a fleet to sail towards Octavian and Mark Antony, but her ships were destroyed by the hurricane. While waiting for the second fleet to be ready, news came of the assassin's defeat. Two men assumed power, as Octavian, the legitimate heir to Caesar, ruled the Western Empire, and Mark Antony ruled the Eastern Empire. Cleopatra, who was very weak in Egypt, needed someone to protect her. For the first time, her instinct betrayed her and she made the wrong decision, she decided to ally with Mark Antony. Cleopatra and Marcus Antonius. A map of the lands and territories ruled by Alexandria as a result of giving it by Marcus Antonius to Cleopatra and her sons in the year 34 BC. After the assassination of Caesar in Rome, the kingdom was divided between his greatest commanders, Octavius backslash U200 B backslash U200 Band Antonius, so Octavius decided to join Egypt to the Roman Empire but he had many consequences, the most severe of which was Marcus Antonius Mark Anthony who wanted to be the sole ruler of the Roman Empire, and then Cleopatra thought to become the wife of Marcus Antonius, who might one day rule the Roman Empire. Mark Anthony came to Egypt, and Cleopatra came to him in secret for her fear of the Egyptian revolutions against her. Mark Anthony was married to Octavia, sister of Octavius backslash U200 B backslash U200 B, August, and the Romans prevented him from marrying a non-Roman woman, and here the problem of his association with Cleopatra arose, and he became her ally instead of annexing Egypt to the Roman Empire. And that was the reason for the enmity between Augustus and Anthony, because Octavia was the sister of Augustus. 
The Roman Empire was divided into East and West, and the East, including Egypt, belonged to Anthony. He comes to her in Alexandria, but she sailed on a luxurious golden pharaonic ship from the Egyptian shores, and Antony had sent for her in 41 BC when he arrived in the city of Tarsus in Cilicia, in order to hold her accountable for her hesitant position and her lack of support for the supporters of Julius Caesar. Cleopatra admired Antony, not only for his looks, where he was handsome, according to historians, but also for his intelligence, because all expectations at this time were confirming Anthony's victory. Tempting or allowing oneself to be tempted a Roman commander has worked in the past. Cleopatra was still young, and she had no reason to assume that her ways would never work again. I decided to repeat history. Antony, who was less intelligent and experienced than Caesar, was seduced by her charms. In 40 BC, Cleopatra gave birth to twins, Cleopatra Selene and Alexander Helios. By the time of their birth, Antony was back in Rome, where he was to marry Octavia, the sister of his ally and archenemy Octavian. Rome was only to be ruled by one ruler. The relationship between Octavian and Antony, and thus between Octavia and her new husband, deteriorated rapidly. In the year 37 BC, Anthony left Rome for Antioch in Syria, where he was sent to Cleopatra. Together, they put together a grand plan for an eastern alliance that would restore Egypt to some of its former glory. Thanks to Anthony, Egypt regained some of its lost eastern lands. Unfortunately, Antony's Parthian campaign, the first step towards strengthening the eastern alliance, was an utter disaster. Instead of acquiring new lands, Antony was forced, through his estranged wife, to beg Octavian for more troops. Antony was given 2,000 soldiers, a ridiculous number, and he also reduced their number, and relations broke down between the two. Anthony's subsequent victory in Armenia restored some face. There were intense celebrations in Alexandria, where Antony sat on the throne and boasted of his sons, by Cleopatra, as kings of the conquered territories of Rome and Egypt. Nothing could displease Octavian and Octavia more. In 32 BC, Octavia was divorced. Anthony and Cleopatra became an official couple. But while the lovers enjoyed an extended tour of the eastern Mediterranean, Octavian was preparing for war. Battle of Actium The decisive naval battle of Actium took place in western Greece in 31 BC and decided the fate of the war. The Battle of Actium was a victory for Octavian. Antony was forced to flee while Cleopatra returned to Alexandria and began gathering her forces. When Anthony joined her several weeks later, the two were effectively cornered. Antony lost many of his ships in his attempt to break the siege around him, and events accelerated and Cleopatra did everything in her power to avoid the disaster after news of the defeat reached Egypt. Cleopatra's offer to give up the throne to her children was ignored. While Antony was preparing for his final battle, in a desperate attempt to stop the forces of Octavianus, the new Caesar of Rome, which had reached the outskirts of Alexandria in the summer of 30 BC, Cleopatra barricaded herself in a shrine that also served as her treasury. When Anthony received the news of Cleopatra's suicide, he threw himself on his sword. However, the news of Cleopatra's death was incorrect. Anthony, who was now dying, was taken to Alexandria and dragged up the mausoleum wall so that he could die in Cleopatra's arms. Suicide instead of captivity. Cleopatra 7. At dawn one day in mid August 30 BC, one of Queen Cleopatra's servants presented a cobra snake, likely an Egyptian cobra, and her means of suicide after she heard of the defeat of her husband, the Roman commander Mark Antonius, in the war. We may believe the words of the Roman poets Virgil, Horace, and Propertius. Some historians have stated that it was the royal left shoulder that received the first fatal sting, and others said that it was Cleopatra's left bare breast. Cleopatra committed suicide in this state of despair by putting a poisonous neighborhood on her chest. The new invader, Octavius Caesar, 
hoped that the queen who ruled Egypt would march in his victory procession in Rome, but he soon saw her body and headed to organize the government. Extremely no more than five words. After the death of Cleopatra, the Romans killed her son, Caesar Ion, for fear that he would claim the Roman Empire as heir to Julius Caesar and his crown prince. Cleopatra VII was depicted on a coin displayed in the Alexandria Museum, telling the story of Cleopatra, who inspired poets and story writers. It was material for the play, Antony and Cleopatra, by William Shakespeare and the play, Everything for Love, 1977 by John Dryden and the play, Caesar and Cleopatra, by George Bernard Shaw and a glossary of poetry in Cleopatra's Suicide by the poet Ahmed Shaki. Cleopatra VII was the last of the Ptolemaic rulers in Egypt, and she surpassed those who preceded her in intelligence, prudence, and ambition. Cleopatra ascended the throne and ruled Egypt for twenty years, from 51 to 30 BC. The image of Cleopatra appeared in the ancient Egyptian currency as a beautiful, lively woman with a thin mouth and clear eyes. Cleopatra, one of the prominent figures in history, Nefertiti, Semiramis, and Scheherazade. The Greek historian Cassius Dio records her death, saying, No one knew for sure how she died. They only found small holes in her arm. Some have assumed that she brought a small poisonous snake for herself. Denying the story of suicide by snake bite. Professor Christoph Schaefer, professor of history at the University of Trier, Western Germany, denied the death of Cleopatra by a cobra snake bite, and it was likely that she died because she drank a combination or cocktails of drugs, and based what he went on on the fact that the snake bite would have exposed Cleopatra to severe, excruciating and long pain before death, in addition to the physical mutilation that he was going to join her, a beautiful woman who was very proud of her beauty. Her burial place has not yet been discovered. It is believed that Cleopatra's suicide came shortly after the suicide of Marcus Antonius, and the ancient historian Plutarch wrote that they were buried in a magnificent royal style in a tomb near Alexandria, and some believe that the shrine became in the depths of the sea after the fourth earthquake in the 8th century when the topography of Alexandria changed, and while others claim that the couple was buried near Tapasiris Magna, an ancient temple containing dozens of tombs and mummies. Cleopatra's Children Cleopatra's four children outlived their mother. Her eldest son, Caesar Ion, theoretically became the sole king of Egypt. However, Ibn Caesar posed an imminent danger to the Romanians. He was caught fleeing Egypt and executed by Octavian. The rest of the children were taken to Rome, where they were first put on public disgrace, and then given to Octavia, Mark Antony's fourth wife to be raised. In 20 BC, Cleopatra Selene married the Numidian prince Juba II, and she bore him a son, who was named, of course, Ptolemy, before dying naturally in relative obscurity. Her brothers, Alexander and Ptolemy Philadelphus, b. 36 AD, were sent to live out of harm's way with their married sister. In Mauritania, they achieved what no one in their family could, a life completely out of the political spotlight. As for the young Prince Ptolemy, he wasn't so lucky. After inheriting his father's throne, he was executed by the Roman Emperor Caligula in the year 40 AD. What did Cleopatra look like? Rumor has it that Cleopatra wrote a book of her beauty secrets to pass on to other women, but what did she really look like? Classical authors are divided on that. Plutarch rates it as just above average good. As for Cassius Dio, on the contrary, he evaluated her as the most beautiful woman in the world, for there was a glow and luster in looking and listening to her. Many early art historians were inclined to identify any woman carrying a snake as representing Cleopatra VII. And if we ignore these dubious distinctions, we will find, surprisingly, that we have so few pictures of the last queen. Her paintings may be divided into two parts. The Egyptian-style portraits, preserved in the statues and walls of the temple at Dendera, are traditionally drawn as any other mystical queen of Egypt, tall, slender, in a wig, 
and dressed in the finest linen and feathers, and the sun disc, cow horns, and serpent head of any traditional pharaonic queen. Such images reveal little about the real Cleopatra, other than her wish to become the mother goddess Isis. As for the non-Egyptian depiction of Cleopatra, it is completely different, and although we will not fall into the trap of assuming that all depictions were real and true to reality, they seem more realistic to the contemporary eye. Here, Cleopatra appears in the dress and hairstyle, the wreath and braiding in the form of a bun in a classic and dignified manner. The coinage shows a woman with an unexciting nose and chin. And the marble statues, intact from Rome, show the same features with little relief, though the queen is again by no means of outstanding beauty, she comes across as determined rather than seductive. Perhaps, then, Cleopatra was counting on the magic of her voice. The historian Plutarch, who was less than impressed by the queen's appearance, says he was amazed by her linguistic abilities. In the end, I thank Jason for your follow-up. We hope to subscribe to the channel and activate the bell button, and do not forget to like. We also await your support through the super chat and the thank you feature.